Good morning, Morai Rabotai, Bruchim Abayim. We are continuing on Masechet Makot, and we are on Daf Yud, Amud Aleph. We're five lines down from the wide, the beginning of the wide lines. Today's Amud is being learned. Le Shkudru Fasher Mav Sarab Badmina and Binyamin Edi Ezra Kohen Ben Malka Zivuk for Gilhad Ben Mordechai Ariel. Healthy delivery for Talia Bad Rivka, Datan Parnasah for Avraham Raphael. This month's learnings have been dedicated by Dayan family, by Cohen family, and by Shay family. It should be an ultimate schut for their families. Today's Amud is also specifically dedicated for the Refuah Shelema of Rachel Simcha Bad Nahid. They should have full recovery. Refuah Shelema. Amen. So we started, this is going to be a fantastic Amud um, of many agadic, all-time famous Gemaras. And the last piece of the, the previous shiur, we discussed that are um, miklat have to be very pleasant. It's a setup in a way that the rotzeach, the person that has to run to are miklat, should not be um, finding himself in a situation that he needs to get out of town to get water. There has to be a source of water provided in the city. The shvakim, you have to have marketplaces that every basic need of human life is brought basically to the city, sold there in a marketplace. You don't need to travel to the next cities and hence getting out of the safe zone of Are Miklat. It has to have Uchlusia, it has to have a certain um, level of, of um, population in a way that he could easily blend in and not be noted. It has to not have uh, the NRA, so to speak, does not there's not meat over there. They don't have guns, gun shops in, in uh, Klezayin, swords and knives in, sold to the people, to the public, spears and all that. And according to everyone, says Gemara, you don't have traps and ropes and, and so on uh, out in the open because, again, you got to kill somebody and there's a rope. Um, so it's, it makes it much, that much easier. And hence, those things are under a a specific level of control in Irmiklat. Why is this? Okay, it's all beautiful, logical things that we say, but where do we get this from? How do you know that you have to have a certain amount of population, of marketplace, water? Um, you know, where do you get that from? Says the Gemara. regel goel hadam sham. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Maikra. What is the pasuk? Says Rabbi Yitzchak, Venas el achat min ha'arim ha'el v'chai. The pasuk says clearly that this go, this fellow that killed accidentally somebody, he should be able to run away to one of the are miklat um, and live there. Why do you have to say v'chai? We know that the Goel Adam can't kill him there because the rest of the Psukim are going to expli explicitly mention that the Goel Adam could only kill him if he stands out of that city. If he steps out, then he's free for all, not for all, but for the Goel Adam. But if he's inside, that's a safe zone. So why do you have to tell me Vachai? Clearly Vachai is not coming to tell me the basic din that the Goel Adam can't kill him, but rather an extra level of chai that not only it's asur for Goel Adam to kill him, but for us, for the Bedin, that is providing this pasuk of letting him know, um, you know th th that he goes to, to Are Miklat, um, letting him go easily by providing signage and proper roads and all of that, Part of that is Vachai. You have to make sure that he lives a proper life over there. Now, what is included in this is going to blow your minds away. Says the Gemara. Avid le midi, de tehevele. You have to do something for him that he could live properly. Venas el achad min ha'arim ha'el. Vachai. Avid le midi de teve le chiuta. Do something that will be a proper life for him. Tana, this is the old time famous Gemara. Talmid she gala maglin raboimo. If a student that is in a yeshiva, he has a rabbi, he's learning Torah, 
with his Rebbe, and now accidentally he kills somebody, not only he goes to Galut, but the Betin is going to ship his Rebbe and goes with it, the entire yeshiva, right? All of a sudden in Aremiklat you'll have a new sign, Yeshivat Etzchaim, right? They're moving from, uh, from next city, his, the entire yeshiva goes there. Why? Shenemar Vachai, same pasuk. He has to be able to live. He has to be able to live. Avid lehmidi teteheve lechiyuta. Do something that will be his, and like the Rambam writes, chaye bale chokma, the life of people who learn Torah, life of a yid, without Torah, kemita chashuva, is like death. The Torah is, is a lifeline of a Jew. If you don't have that, so you'll say, well, wait a second, what's the obvious question? It's the obvious question. The obvious question is, where are you going? You're going to, you hope it's, you're not going to, you're going to a city of the teachers of Torah. These are people who are the, the, the best teachers of Torah. You're going to, to Lakewood, <laughs> you're going to, to Bnei Brak, well, you shall I, well, what do you need exactly to bring your yeshiva and your rebbe with you? Well, there's no one that you could learn from there? The answer is that's exactly correct, because a person does not necessarily get to learn from every person. Lo min hakol adam mod. A person does not merit to learn just from anybody. If you click with someone, it's actually very interesting. The play you eat, Rabbi Eliezer Popo from, from Turkey, uh, the author of the famous Sefer Play you eat. He also wrote Shelotu Chuvot Play you eat. He has a Sefer on Halacha, or Chaim on Yoredea, Chesed la Alafim. He has a Sefer on Shas, Orot Elim. In Sefer Orot Elim, he writes, he says, if you find a Chavruta, somebody that you can learn with well, and you know, it's working out, don't let go of it, because it is so difficult to find somebody that you could actually uh, connect with. And learn. Now imagine, a Rebbe Talmud is even more important. You need to have somebody that you can learn from, and therefore, <coughs> it is considered his life. It's considered bare necessities of a life is to have a Rebbe with you. If you don't have your Rebbe with you in where you live, it's considered not having bare necessities of life. So much so that we, the Bedin, tell the wife and the children of the Rebbe, says, Chacham, Bechavot, Yalla, moving, right? You go into Are Miklat. You know how difficult that is? He could be for the rest of his life. For the rest of his life. Imagine, it depends on the, the life of Kohen Gadol. So this Chacham, the Rosh Hashiva, that now is moving, he could be moving for the rest of his life. He built a life, a yeshiva, a career, a name for himself for decades, and now he has to pick up and leave. Why? Because this person is not considered alive without his rebbe. What, what happens to all the other people? The other Talmud with that rebbe. The whole yeshiva goes with him. I said, it's not only him. Magnin Rabbah, of course, the yeshiva goes with him as well. The imagine. To the level of discomfort that you inflict on, on a rabbi. Why? Because without Torah, you have, if you don't have a rabbi, people, people are hard for them to, to walk an extra block to go to, 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 to this shul, to the Rishiva, or the rabbi, or this. You go to Galut for it. If you don't, if you're not with your rabbi, that's not life. It's not life. Imagine such a thing. Says the Gemara, that's why a person has to be very careful who you assume as your Talmud. Right? Says the Gemara. Amar Abzeira. Thank you. Mikan shle shana adam le talmid sheno hagun. You see from here, and the concept that we, we say, a person should be careful not to teach Torah to a talmid that's not, a student that's not proper. Right? The Gemara says this in Masechet Chulin, that um, a person should be careful not to, not to teach the talmid sheno hagun. The Gemara in the Afkuf Lamed Gimal. But, there is talking about a different aspect of it. So what I hear says, you see from here also another reason why you should not be teaching to Talmud Shein Hagun. Now, what's the obvious question of that? The obvious question is, we're talking about, we're not talking about a sniper, we're talking about someone that accidentally killed somebody. So you, when, when he comes to apply to learn by you, 
How do you know in 10 years he's going to kill somebody accidentally, right? So the simple answer to me, it seems, would be because you see, me, me, first of all, Chazal say, Megalgelin zchut al yedeh zakai lechova al yedeh chayav. Even accidental avera that the person does is because he deserves that that type of avera should come through his hand. If he would be a higher level of a person, perhaps that would not have happened. But also, as we mentioned before, uh, by, by Shevet Reuven, why there were so many um, issues of, of uh, accidental and deliberate kills, because pachas kamayim al totar. It's a certain midah of a person that, that gets worked up very quickly, is quick to, to make decisions, rash decisions, and so on. And that person, yeah, I mean, if he ends up accidentally even causing someone's demise, you're not surprised that he didn't check the, the axe and the, the, the metal on top of it, and it was not 100%. Well, let me call back to the Tanaim, but you know, it, you're not surprised if something of that nature um, slips through his, his fingers because, you know, pun intended, because that's, that's the nature of that person. So you check a person, the level of sitkut, the level of of, of humanity um, very much has to do with this level as well. So says the Gemara. Amar bi Yochanan. Harav shegala. The reverse of it also is true. Harav shegala magdin yeshivato imo. Now a rav that goes to galut, whether for himself or because of a different talmid, maglin yeshivato imo. The entire yeshiva is going to galut with him as well. Again, why? Because their lives are not going to be a life without him. Right? The life is not going to be, able to, says the Gemara. How do you know? Any? Do, is that true, says the Gemara? Bahamar Rabbi Yochanan, Minai le divre Torah shehen koltin. Rabbi Yochanan himself is the one that said, How do you know that divre Torah are koltin? That they observe. Shenemar. Et Betzer Bamidbar. It says, ta talking about Aremiklat, and says one of the cities of, of six cities that initially were, were pointed out, Betzer Bamidbar, and right away afterwards it says, Vezot HaTorah. Right away immediately afterwards it talks about the Torah. Now, what, what does that mean exactly? It means, you know, if you have the Torah, it should be. A protection from going to Galut. So says Mara, lo kasha. Habe it not the asikba, habe it not the lo asikba. The protection that you have from this type of thing of um, an accidental death not coming through your hand and so on is dependent on whether or not you're learning the Torah right that moment or you're not learning Torah right that moment, right? So if you are learning Torah, right there and then, then you have protection. But if you're not, in the time that you're not learning Torah, you don't necessarily have the same level of protection at the very least, right? Now this is the Gemara there says that, well, there's that, and there's also a Gemara in Kiddushin, Daf Lamed Aleph, that talks about the, the Torah being a protection even when you are not involved in learning Torah. Like the Mara in, in, um, in Sota talks about the fact that the difference between a regular mitzvah and the mitzvah of Talmud Torah is that other mitzvot, be'it not asikba, when you are doing the mitzvah, you have protection, right? Shomer mitzvah lo davara, like the Mara in Pesachim Davchet talks about a person that, that wants to, to check for chametz in a rubble of a wall that fell, and there are scorpions, there are snakes. Is, is it protected? Is it not protected for a person that's doing the mitzvah b'dikat chametz? And we talk about that in the Gibara and in that sugya, and four other places in Shas. But here we're talking about a mitzvah protecting you when you are doing the mitzvah. And the Gibara in Sota says Torah is different. That is magna umatzil. It's magen mi yisurim umatzil mi yetzerara, and it's even when you're not involved in the Limud Atar. This Gemara is saying a little differently. Our learner over here discusses this as well. But the Gemara says, either that or we buy Emma, or I could say, which would be more aligned with those Gemara that we just mentioned, my 
Koltin, Koltin, Malach HaMavit. The protection is from the angel of death. Malach HaMavit. That's the, the protection the Torah provides for a person. You know, again, Malach HaMavit and Yetzara is the same Malach, like the Mara says in, um, in Masach Babatra. Mara says, Hu HaSatan, Hu Yetzara, Hu Malach HaMavit. It's the same. Same malach that does three jobs. From here you see that a person has, at least should have three jobs. Like, yeah, um, it's the same, same malach that, that tricks you, and then he becomes a prosecutor, and then he carries on. And the din says, says the Gemara, the Gemara brings the example for this, right? Example for this is that Rav Chista, his time had come to pass away, and Hashem sends the malach hamavit to um, take his neshama, and he's learning in Bet Midrash, right? He couldn't. The Yitzhara, the, the Satan, could not take his neshama away, the Malach HaMavid. So what happened? The Malach HaDemota, the Shaliach of Malach HaMavid, could not get close to him. He couldn't even get close to him. Forget about taking his neshama. Because he was not stopping, his mouth would not stop a moment from learning to write. Sitting there for six hours, the, the, the guy is learning away. Now the second that he's quiet, can you imagine that? He said, well, what am I going to do? I'm st still here for, for hours, like, you know, I'm not getting paid by hour. It's a job-based thing, you know. Mm -hmm. He wants to take the neshama. Well, what is he going to do? So says the Gemara, Salik Piyati Ba'arza. He, he went and he sat on top of the, the cedar tree in the, in, the, in the yard of the Bet Midrash. The whole thing collapsed. The entire tree came crashing down with a crashing sound. For a second, Shatik, Shatik for a moment, uh, you know, he became aware of the, 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 the boom, so to speak, and he quieted down from his, his learning, and that's the moment that he took his neshama. It's a famous Gemara that talks about the same, same story about David HaMelech. David HaMelech asked Hashem uh, to tell him when he's going to be um, taken away, when he's going to die, and Hashem told him, I'm not going to tell you these things that we don't necessarily reveal. It's a whole Midrash by David HaMelech that he actually was, did not really have... Um, much of life, and he got 70, 70 years from Adam. But he's shown a lot to talk about the life uh, expect, expect, expectancy and uh, lifespan of the Abid HaMelech, a lot of deep and very interesting um, agadic concepts and Kabbalistic concepts. But nevertheless, um, that perhaps may be the reason that he asked this question of, you know, when is uh, my time up? And Hashem told him, I can't tell you. But I will tell you that it's going to be on Shabbat, right? One of the reasons that we say Sitkat Cha three times is because your side, so to speak, of three um, of our leaders, Moshe Rabbeinu, Yosef HaTzadik, and David HaMelech, so David HaMelech died on Shabbat. So every Shabbat, David HaMelech would learn the entire day, right? The entire day would, you know, non-stop learning. Imagine that, like, you know, the doors of the Beth Midrash are open here uh, every hour. People should be, <coughs> should, be, should be taking lessons. You know, as Ben Ishchai writes uh, on Shabbat, when you learn, it's a thousand times more than um, a regular, regular day of learning. If you do a cheshbon, it comes one hour of learning on Shabbat, it will be like almost 40 days full straight learning nonstop, consecutive hours, a tremendous thing. So David was learning the entire, and what happens is, Yitzhara comes, the Malach HaMavet, can't take him, so what's he going to do? He goes to the, to the garden of the palace, and he starts making tremendous noise, and David Amalek, as he's learning, He's going down the steps to see what's happening in his, in his house, in his yard, and one of the steps be, uh, beneath his, his feet breaks, and he um, kind of like falls a little bit, and that moment that he's in the middle of like catching his balance, he stops learning, and that's when he, um, he, he passes away. So that's, again, Rabbi Vegar asks the question here, why doesn't the Gemara bring that story, which is, you know, more profound, I mean, Melech, versus this, Rabbi Yassid May says the Gemara. Amar, so hence the, again, the, the, the protection that the Torah gives a person, but not necessarily is going to be protecting you from a, an accidental death in that way. So says the Gemara. Amar, Rabtan Kumbar Khanilai, Rabtan Kumbar Khanilai asked me to name Mazaharu bin 
Limanot behatzala tchila. Why is it that the Shevet of Reuben is the first of the Aramic lot that is mentioned beever hayarden? Mi pene, you think is random, right? No, you think it's because he's a bechor. Absolutely not. The reason for it is very obvious. Because shehu patach behatzala tchila, talking about saving lives, Reuben was the first one that saved a Jewish life. Right? The brothers wanted to kill um, Yosef HaTzadik, and he told them, He heard, and he saved his life. He says, you know, you're not going to kill him. Throw him in the pit. He'll die by himself. You want to accomplish his death, he'll die, and you put him there. Right? And he really wanted to take him out, take him to Yaakov, right? But he was the first one, really, in the business of Hatzala, so to speak. And therefore, he, his city, his name, his Shevet, is the first one to get that Hatzala many, many um, generations later. That's something absolutely powerful. That even if you do something for an ulterior motive, so to speak. He wanted to save Yosef because he was part of his tshuva process. To, to amend the relationship that he had with his father and so on. But yet, when you do the right thing, quiet moment of doing the right thing, that never goes away. Never goes away. Generations later, you will be the recipient of that good that you did. What is it that it says in Pasuk? This that we mentioned that Moshe Rabbeinu, as at that moment, he separated the three Are Miklat uh, that were supposed to be in Ever in the eastern side of the Jordan River. Amalo Hakadosh Parchule Moshe. Why do you have to say Mizrach Hashemish? That it's in, in the Mizrach, so to speak, in the eastern side of the Jordan River, Mizrach Hashemish. Why do you have to say uh, Mizrach? which is the language of um, east, but also Zricha comes from sunrise, because sunrise is from the east, right? Mizrach HaShemesh is a reference to the sunrise. Why do you have to reference sunrise by the appointment of the three Aremi Klat that Moshe Rabbeinu did? Why? Why would you need that? So says the Gemara, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Moshe. Hashem tells Moshe Rabbeinu, um, you should shine a light of sun for the Rotschim, for those who accidentally killed somebody, that they should have a hope, so to speak, like just like the morning gives a hope to them, to, to the person, that life ex starts again. Here also will be uh, giving life to them, basically giving them hope of living and not being killed, and so on. There are those who say it was post factor. When Moshe Rabbeinu actually did what he did, then. Hashem told him, Amalo, Yisrach Hashem Eshel Rotschim, Chazaku Baruch, Yashakoyach, that you that gave life, like as Rikhat Hashem you gave light and life to the people. Now, having said that, Tal Hashem Simai, my dichtiv, what does it say? Or if Kesef lo hisba kasef, the person that loves money will never be satisfied with money, right? En adam met vechatzit avato beyado, a person doesn't die and having even half of his, um, his desires in his hands, like uh, the Midrash says, the Vinagaon brings this in his Iger Tagra, he brings the Midrash, that Olam Azeh is like uh, someone that's drinking salt water, a very thirsty person that's drinking salt water. He has so much Tava to drink because he's thirsty, and it seems to him that he's gobbling up this water, he will quench his thirst, but every gobble, every ounce that he, he puts down makes him thirsty and thirsty because it's salt water. So Olam Azeh is the same way. You think you'll have this car and that house and this one and the one, and it's going to be good. Every piece that you'll have, you'll become uh, your tava, your thirst, your hunger, your emptiness is going to become bigger and bigger. But it, it says it specifically about Kesef as well. Why, Why specifically about that? It says Rav Simai Darshind, Umi oev ba'amon lo tevuah. Now the Gemara is going to Darshin many different pshatim on this, on this pasuk. Says the Gemara, oev kesef lo ispa kasef ze Moshe. The one that likes um, money, kesef, and is not going to be satisfied with kesef, you know who that is? Moshe Rabbeinu. That's a reference. Why? Because kesef is not just money. It's currency. 
currency of your life. What is real kesef, right? Yekarahi mi peninim, Torah mitzvot are more precious than jewels and treasures. Chol chafaseha lo yishvuba. Nothing comes to the price of a mitzvah. And a person that looks at the, the, the mitzvot and opportunities of doing good as a currency of their life, then, you know, it's like in, in Kakesef, the Pastor Shalom Melech says, in Kakesef, in Tabakeshenu Kakesef, Vechamatmonim Tachpesena, Az Tavin Yirat Hashem, Vedat Elohim Timsa. And basically, means if you go after mitzvot and Masim Tovim like money, and if you dig after it, like a person digs after treasures, then you'll actually find it. So says, Moshe Rabbeinu was, was that person. He knew that appointment of these three cities is nothing, because they are, as we learned in the previous Amud, these three cities are not going to be operational until 14 years after his death. And yet, he right away chose those cities uh, you know, the boundaries of the cities, and he appointed those cities as Arai Miklat. Why? There's absolutely no reason to do it. But you know why he did it? Because he, he said, I have another last mitzvah to do. I'll grab onto it. I'll do it before I die. But he said to himself, Mitzvah Yadi Akaimena. A mitzvah that came to my hand, an opportunity that I have, I will take advantage and I will do. And that, that's the Ohev Kesef Lois Pakasef. You nev, it's never enough for a person like Moshe Rabbeinu, someone that values uh, mitzvot as, a, as the ultimate currency of his life. Um, it's never enough. And if you could grab a little something, even though that is not really going to be operational, it's still something that he wanted to do. The Gwara is going to have several other beautiful drushes on this, which Mezat Hashem, we will continue to learn in the days to come. Exactly.